Elliptic curve cryptography. It enables everything we know in the world of Ethereum and it's notoriously hard to grasp. In this video, I'm going to give you the breakdown that I wish that I had when I was first learning about cryptography and getting into smart contract auditing. But first, who am I? My name is Owen, and over a year ago, I founded Guardian Audits, a smart contract audit firm. And since then, we've uncovered dozens of critical vulnerabilities from auditing hundreds of smart contracts. My goal is to distill down everything I've learned from over a thousand hours spent auditing smart contracts and give it to you so that you can ultimately become a much better auditor than I ever could. All right, let's not waste any more time and let's just dive right in to elliptic curve cryptography. All right, you see we've got our whiteboard pulled up here because we're ready to examine the SECP 256 K1 elliptic curve. And if you've read Mastering Ethereum, you're probably already well familiar that this is the particular elliptic curve that is used for the cryptography in Ethereum. So we're going to get to know this curve a little bit more intimately and start to sort of understand how it can be used to generate public keys from private keys and why exactly it offers security for Ethereum. So let's start off by just going ahead and basically drawing what this curve generally looks like. So I'm gonna start off with a X and Y coordinate plane, and then the elliptic curve, as you've seen, does something like this, if you'll indulge me. So that's my, my greatest attempt off the fly to basically just draw out generally what SECP 256 K1 is going to look like. Great, but why on earth does this elliptic curve even look this way, right? So to understand this, let's go up and just have a look at the equation for this particular elliptic curve. So the first thing you'll notice is that the Y value is squared here, and that's what's yielding this reflection across the, the Y axis, right? because we've squared the Y value. Now there is a positive Y value that satisfies this particular congruency. And there's also a negative Y value that satisfies it as well. And that's what's giving us the reflection that you see across this X axis here. Okay, and the second thing that you'll notice is that we see a mod P here, right? So this basically just means that the, the Y squared value that we're operating with here is gonna be congruent to some x cubed plus seven, which is a residue modulo p, right? And I'm not gonna go too far into the modular arithmetic that's going on here, basically without getting too in depth of what this means and how exactly you could compute this and prove this out to yourself. We can basically just say that you'll notice that the, the curve cuts off right here, and this is gonna be the y value where y squared is equal to P over two. And then what actually happens on the elliptic curve is we can pick up these Y values since it's modular arithmetic here. And we can say that these values, to be clear, the downside of this is everything that will be uh, less than this as well, right? And then everything that would be greater than this value is going to basically pop up on the other side of the elliptic curve. And we're going to see all of the y squared greater than equal to p over two values come up on this side of the elliptic curve. And there are even ways to basically visualize this elliptic curve on a sphere to make this sort of more continuous and understandable since we're doing this modular arithmetic. But we're not gonna get too in the weeds here. Basically, the, the interesting thing about that is just that uh, the numbers will continue. They'll go this way, this way, and then all of a sudden, they'll just wrap back around and go like this. Okay, great, so what even is P, right? P is a prime number that is actually characteristic to SECP 256 K1, and it is a very large prime number. There are also some other characteristic values of SECP 256K1 that are important to understand. 
And to basically describe these values, we're going to go very briefly into some high level group theory. Don't worry, I'm going to explain this as simply as I possibly can in the way that I understand it. But the first thing to understand is that SECP 256K1 is not actually defining a particular curve per se, but actually a group of points that lie on the curve. So what you could really think SECP 256K1 as is a set of points, and these are gonna be simply just x, y points that lie on said elliptic curve. And the actual coordinates for each of the, these points are going to be very, very large numbers as they're you know, eventually modded by a prime number that is extremely large. Now, this being a group, it has several properties, right? So first of all, there is the order of the group, which is n. n is basically the number of points that are defined on the elliptic curve. The points in the elliptic curve are gonna be characterized, of course, by this equation. And you can see that these are gonna be integers modulo p. So for the group theorists out there, this, these, all of these coordinates are gonna be inside the field zp. And it's important to note that the, the size of this group, or n, is actually prime. I'm not gonna go into how n has been calculated by some very smart people, because frankly, it's above my knowledge and we don't have time for that in this particular video. But essentially, because n is prime, we're actually able to define basically an isomorphism between these points on the curve and actually very large numbers. And it's, it's not important to understand exactly uh, what this isomorphism looks like or even really what an isomorphism is. It's just important to understand that we can map each one of these points that lies on the curve to a number which is relatively prime to n and less than n, which is every number less than n because n is prime. And this is basically how we're able to represent our private and public keys, which are very big numbers on the elliptic curve as points on the elliptic curve or as points in the SECP 256K1 group, which is a group of points on the elliptic curve. Great, I know this sounds very complex right about now, but trust me, we're gonna bring it all together and it's going to make sense. Great, so now that we have defined this group here, one of the important aspects of being able to have our group is that we can define operations that act over the group, right? So for instance, for uh, the group of integers, you have defined addition and multiplication over that group, right? Well, what we can do is we can take this group of points on the elliptic curve and we can define addition and multiplication how we please, right? So for this particular group, addition is defined as follows. So we remember that every member of the group is a point on the elliptic curve. So let's take two points on the elliptic curve and let's add them together. So we're going to say that I have a point A and we're gonna say A is right here and that's our point A. And then we're gonna say that we have a point B and B is right here. So these are two members of the SECP 256K1 group. Now we're going to add them together. So to add them together, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to draw the line that intersects both of these points Let's just pretend like that actually intersects. And by the characteristic of an elliptic curve is that when you intersect two points, you are actually guaranteed to always intersect only one other point on the elliptic curve. So what this gives us is this third point right here. Now you might think, oh, there's our result, right? Well, no, we actually go ahead and take this point and then we will reflect it down and now this is a plus b on our elliptic curve now you can imagine if i wanted to add b again to this a plus b point what i would do is i would make a dotted line that intersects both of these and if this was an accurate elliptic curve 
it would actually intersect at exactly some point down here. And then I would basically uh, reflect that up here. And then our resulting point would be somewhere right here on the actual elliptic curve. Great, so that is addition on an elliptic curve, but how does multiplication work, right? Well, multiplication is obviously just repeated addition. So if I gave you this point and I said, I wanted to multiply it by some integer, I would do this, uh, you know, that integer amount of times until I ended up with some point on the curve that is say, you know, maybe it's right here and maybe this is my resulting point. Now the really interesting and appealing from a cryptographical perspective thing about this is that if I just gave you R and then I told you that I computed it with some multiplication of a, it would be actually insanely, in fact, insurmountably hard for you to compute the number of times that I multiplied a. So that's actually exactly how Ethereum uses elliptic curves to make very secure private and public keys. Ethereum, and in fact, SECP256K1 in general, has a defined generator point Let's say A is our generator point, and this is the point that's used to multiply by a private key to produce a public key, which is the resulting product of the private key multiplied by A. And this is the public key that can be shared with anybody, and it is absolutely insurmountable to calculate the private key integer that was multiplied by A to yield this particular public key R. So if we just write that out, if I have some small private key, E, that's your private key, and then I multiplied it by A, that's going to yield R under elliptic curve multiplication, right? Because E is actually isomorphic. It can be translated to a point on the elliptic curve because it's uh, less than N. A is also the generator point, just a common point that everybody uses on the elliptic curve, and then R is a resulting point on the elliptic curve because the SECP256K1 group is closed under this multiplication that's defined over the whole group. This private key that only the owner of this public key knows can then be used as a mechanism to sign a message and prove that this public key, the person who owns this public key, actually signed that message, right? And essentially in that algorithm, it is very easy to verify that the person has actually signed that message, but it is of course very, very hard. And there's actually an aspect of randomness in there that makes it impossible to backtrack and compute the user's private key. And that's a high level overview of how Ethereum uses elliptic curve cryptography to provide a cryptographically secure private key and public key system. Go ahead and watch this video over and over again until it sinks in. It's going to take a few attempts at understanding this stuff to really get a grasp on it. If you have any more questions, go to lab.guardianaudits.com and apply to join our community of like-minded, aspiring and practicing auditors where you can ask all things Web3 security related, get the chance to team up and participate in practice audits, and even get an opportunity to perform shadow audits with real practicing auditors of real protocols. All right, guys, that is all for this time. I'll see you in the next one.